here at Mita Unshackled, Benzinga, Miami. What what a show. There's amazing people everywhere, and I'm pleased to be joined by a couple more of them. Dimitri Downing again here with co-host. George Tanche, Dr. George, Pure Five Extraction. Do he has to mention he's a doctor. I have a JD, <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a doctor too. But he is the doctor of extraction, Pure Five. Uh, but we're not here to talk about George. We've got a whole segment on him. We're here to talk about Rocco Yanapolio. Did I say that right? Yanapolo. Yanapolo. No Yanapolo. Idea, it's Italian. And Liz Geiselman, that, that, that's a little bit easier for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, you guys are, are cannabis journey people, journey men yourselves. And so we want to talk about your journey in cannabis, where, where you've been, how you guys got into cannabis, and how you are in the industry, your place right now, and then your current projects, your current companies, what's going on. So let's start with Rocco. How about you? Sure. Or should we do ladies first? What, Let's sorry. do ladies first. Oh, now you put me on the spot. Uh, my name is. I, Liz I just, I, just I, don't, I, I did shrooms with, with Rocco in the mountains. I know. Except I was invited to that journey, we, and I'm um, we, pretty happy I didn't have to we, go. We, I guess. <laughs> By the way, if you're ever going to do shrooms with somebody, Rocco is one of those. We, we, I've heard. We'll talk about that a little I've bit heard. later. He is yeah. definitely a journeyman. There's no doubt of that. Yes, Rocco, um, Ryan, and Frank. Yes. Go ahead, Liz. Well. Um, I, um, I'm the CEO of Rocky Mountain Regents. Uh, we got into cannabis about 15 years ago in Colorado. Um, our company was born in 51, but we have always done high-grade chemistry for laboratories, analytical laboratories. So we, a lot of people came to us in cannabis early on uh, for their testing and their solvents for extraction. And so we started teaching them about how they could do it safely. Uh, we saw a lot of very weird stuff in the beginning, as everybody has in cannabis. And so we've... Uh, kind of taken the charge to make sure that we're educating and advocating for good chemistry, clean chemistry, public safety, um, analytical laboratory testing uh, solutions as well. And then, uh, so we started 710 Spirits with that product line. And then last year we acquired cannabis kitchen supplies. So now we are doing all the instrumentation and extraction equipment and cannabis uh, kitchen supplies, mixers, gummy depositors, all the good stuff that Rocco will tell you about. So Time flies when you're having fun, by the so way. you got to get a little closer, Rocco. 710 Spirits, what is that? So 710 Spirits, uh, with Rocky Mountain Regions, we have about 4,000 different chemicals. So we just took 710 Spirits and just defined those chemicals into the, the cannabis market so that people didn't have to go to our website and look for which grade of isopropyl or which grade of ethanol or which grade of whatever to use. Um, so when it came to the testing solutions that they were going to need, the HPLC solvents, or the extraction solvents or the media around um, cleaning, like clean up. Uh, we just kind of narrowed it down and called it 710 Spirits. So it was a little bit easier than going through our whole book of business because cannabis is only one of seven industries that we service. So what is the safest extraction then? I'm sorry? What is the safest chemical for extraction? Safest type of extraction. Mm, I don't know. Every uh, You know, She's, I don't know. That, that, that. Here's what I'm going to say. Um, there's, every one of them has their own, you know. I like uh, that. They're all my children. They're because. all my children. That's right. Uh, they all have their different ups and downs and pros and cons. You know, um, we saw a lot early on with the hemp industry in ethanol uh, because it was an easier way to move a lot of product very quickly. Uh, but I think the trend right now is going a lot of solventless in the marijuana. So um, we're kind of, we've seen a huge decline in solvents in particular with people going solventless, which is why we've kind of transitioned. Um, we also know that solvents are going to be cheap. I mean, once the big guys get into this, the guys who have tank yards and the guys that have all that, that are willing to accept cannabis money, we knew that we had a short, limited time frame right. to be able to sell these products before they were able to kind of take that. So we're transitioning not to solvent list, but we're transitioning into more of the scientific equipment. We're seeing a lot of bioreactors getting sold now. Um, so we're seeing a lot of different movement. I mean, the one thing I can say about this industry is it innovates almost every month at this point. No, you know? I, I love that. Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Just really, As an investor, I'm, I'm, a lot of people watch this stuff. I'm always thinking about investor for some reason we are at benzinga but, yeah. but i'm thinking about your willingness to transition and not get this is this is the best this is what has to be this is what is that's that's great leadership i really admire that oh thank sorry you. george you had a question and i know there are no poison substances in the world they're poison quantities so yes. it's very important how do we measure that what precision and uh, what we provide for the safety prospect 
Absolutely. And I think a lot of people just didn't know that or they started to use, you know, I mean, there was a period of time that people were using for some pretty crazy chemistry to do some of this stuff oh, yeah. that what they weren't testing. So, I mean, wild, I, wild I tend to be a little bit more on the ethanol side of things. Um, I also find that if you're setting up an extraction laboratory, ethanol's a little bit easier to get through your fire marshals and mm -hmm. because people know what distilleries look like. They know what microbreweries look like. They don't know what pentene, heptene, these are scary things for them. So ethanol is a little bit easier to get through that process, but not necessarily the most efficient. And it really depends on the end product of what you're wanting to bring in. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I hear so much about solventless, solventless. On the, on the retail front, everybody's out there, solventless, solventless. I don't know that much about the subject matter, but I like how you guys transition towards that because it seems to be the 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 way i don't know I mean, well yeah i mean i i mean i don't even know what it means <laughs> i mean you know there's water extraction there's cryo there's vapor technologies there's all sorts of different things that people are doing and i think we're just kind of on the cusp of that but i mean extraction has been around for hundreds of years if you Thousands go down of years. if you go to the bakery aisle in your store and don't you know olives don't just produce oil they right. do this through <laughs> an extraction process so um, you know, peppermint or vanilla. I mean, this has been going on for a long time. There's no secret sauce to this. It's it's just science I can't, about I can't, to do I, this. I can't do my dance here, but my ancestors used to put stuff in like a barrel and just <laughs> jump on it, you know? Extraction. Isn't that a form of extraction? That is. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. Lucille Ball. That's solventless. Ball. <laughs> that's that's solventless. That's there you the go. Plan. That's the simplest one. Yeah. You know? Or just chew it. Chew it. <laughs> it depends on if he has his shoes on or not. No. It's, whether it's solventless. It's, I mean, no, it, 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 it's a necessary thing. Um, so, well, yeah. you, you're impressive. I'm, I'm really glad. I can see you're a great leader of your company. Really appreciate that. Your level of expertise is tremendous. Glad we dipped into that a little bit. Thanks. we got to give Rocco a chance to introduce sure. himself. Rocco. Rocco Cannabis Kitchen Supplies. So um, as Liz mentioned, uh, she acquired the brand, as you said, a year ago, but it was actually two years ago now. Oh, two. Time flies when you're having fun. Um, and as she alluded to, we're all the equipment and supplies in the industry along with the consumable stuff. One of the things I would highlight is that we sell compliant equipment and supplies. So for people that are trying to do the right thing and be compliant with all the laws, we have all the equipment with all the... Uh, necessary certifications and SDS sheets, et cetera, that you would need to be able to demonstrate your compliance in the industry. So one-stop shop from plant to product, we sell the extraction equipment, cultivation, processing equipment, as well as all the stuff for gummies and edibles and those types of things. And to your point, successful people in this space have to be able to pivot because the goalposts keep moving for our clients and obviously for us as well. So it's a constant uh, battle to keep up with everything that is changing and relevant in our space. So coming out of high school, you didn't say I'm going to one day run a kitchen supply company in cannabis. Negative. How did, how did you how did that happen? happen? Uh, the short story is I went into the air force and got technical training. And so first 20 years of my life, I was actually in it. And then I transitioned into more of a corporate supply type role. So I did a lot of, um, sourcing and HR work and a bunch of things like that that gave me kind of a well-rounded experience in business and uh, then in 2014 when oil and gas went in the shitter I had an opportunity to take a nice severance package and do what I really wanted to do which at that time you know marijuana was starting to become a thing right and I started paying attention to it and made the transition into into the industry and, and now we're not just marijuana we're into psychedelics and everything else so, any plant-based or natural medicine so this was your first venture into cannabis it's been around for seven eight years how, how long has your this company been around uh so cannabis kitchen supplies was in 2017 is when that was formed but i got into the industry in 2015 doing consulting okay i did a lot of those two um, were you like the taste testing and stuff were you doing <laughs> that kind of consulting well, I'm, no. I'm, I'm, compliance i don't know we need to know <laughs> yes compliance consulting I did, okay i did taste a couple like three things okay. I think. but that's a volunteer job <laughs> volunteer job yes. so 2015 17 you were moving finding around my way finding your way and, yep. and you're doing compliance and then I had the opportunity to sell, which I've never had a sales job in my life. I did a lot of contract negotiation and buying of goods for corporate America, but had never formally sold stuff. So that was new to me, but it seemed like a good fit. And I was across the table from those folks when I was negotiating contracts. So I kind of knew what they were like. So I was able to figure it out. And then how did the two of you guys meet? How did this relationship come about? Ooh. 
Is that a tough? Uh, these are supposed, like, uh, uh, supposed to be softballs. So yeah. no, we we there was a receivership I mean, and he was declaring bankruptcy. No, no, no. It was uh, we met several years ago um, on the road. I think this is my sixty fifth um, show conference or something of the, that nature in cannabis. Um, and so we met on the road and really, you know, my, my chemical company was just strictly chemicals. He was doing other things. So we, we partnered a lot. We did a lot of lead generation together. And then about, uh, November of 2019, we started a group called the Canna Consortium and that's 16 ancillary partners that go from plant to product that were trusted because what we saw on the road, a lot of times was that people knew how to make a really cool logo. They really knew how to do a nice you know, booth and everything, but then, <laughs> but then they didn't, well, but then they weren't there to stand behind the product. I had one client buy a $1.2 million CO2 machine. And the ne the next month, the company was out of business. They had no idea how to run it. So we saw a lot of bad actors in the early times, you right. know, people chasing the, you know, green dollar. And so we, we started this group of ethical people that have enough capital funding behind their companies. They're not going to go away tomorrow. But they also have to educate and advocate in this industry because that's one of my that's kind of objectives deal. is to make sure that when you're buying from an ancillary partner, that they are doing the education, that they are advocating, that they are doing what's right for this industry. It shouldn't just be plant touching um, companies that are doing that. It needs to be everybody. And it should be something that you're talking to your vendors about. Okay, now I'm off my, my that's how we met. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, George, that's how George and I met because he was out there advocating He's like one of the really well-known speakers on the, on the extra what do you call Yeah, I'm after the cleanest extraction, safest extraction. So I've been uh, for all these 10 years in the cannabis industry was trying to tell people what is the better way to do it. So he comes from the, uh, what, what? Yeah, so very similar um, you, vision. Like, yeah, uh, yeah teach, educate, nice. stand by your product. But you, what, what, what industry were you in before cannabis? Fragrance and flavor. Fragrance and flavor. Yes. Yes. He comes to that industry. Uh, so, so I mean, I think you guys should hang out after the show and just chat for a while because there's a lot of... Talk you know, there's a lot of, yeah, talk. lot of synergies there <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's way over my head, but it's okay. It's okay. People know who you are. That's important. Um, uh, sorry, I, I lost my train of thought. Canna Consortium, though. Mm -hmm. Who else is in that? Can, can you name all 16? I, I cannot, but Liz can. Oh. Maybe. Oh, come on. That's not Let's fair. Let's give him a shout out. Okay, so it's 710 Spirits, Rocky Mountain Regents, and Cannabis Kitchen Supplies, Extract Consultants, LA Consulting, Mock, uh, Mock Technologies, Clark Hill. Um, Pioneer. Nope. Who? Pioneer. Sort of. No. Oh, Clark, Clark Hill is part of your current? Kind of yep. Clark Hill joined this year. Uh, we have, let's see, I'm trying to think of all of our people because well, they're going to be mad. How about a website? What's uh, the website? But it's cannaconsortium.com. Yeah. Um, the um, uh, Thompson Duke. Um, gosh, I'm trying to look at their names in my head. Um, so I could, I, I could, I, echelon uh, contractor. So anyway, but there's, there's, there's the quite boss. a few. That's right. There's quite a few of us in this group that uh, I wasn't prepared to talk about that group. No, today, no, but, no, no. Um, but they, they, it's really about coming together. We do a lot of speaking engagements together. We do a lot of marketing together, but it really it comes down to that education and advocacy and making sure that we're, you know, at the forefront of that. And people can come to us and know that what they're going to get from us they're gonna these companies are gonna be around you know they're not they're Solid not gonna be refunds. buying two hundred thousand dollar piece of equipment and nobody be there to to support it so. i'm feeling as if like we should tuck Mita under your wing as well somehow because it just makes sense right no no, no i'm does. busy he you can have it he <laughs> yeah. can do that he can do that no <laughs> consider no, no. it tucked we wouldn't we want you you're, you're you're a natural leader rocco and i we just chill we just hang out <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I guess I'm uh, don't have good life balance. I think that's what's really is being said here. I'm not good at the life balance stuff. <laughs> no, I'm, so. I'm impressed. We never met before, which is fantastic. One of the things about me on Shackled is I met so many people at so many conferences. I'm like, this is a really interesting conversation. This is a really interesting person. They're really interesting background, really interesting company. So let's do it live. Let's record it and let's share it with the world for somebody who can't be here. Somebody can watch the the networking experience. Absolutely. So this is networking. We didn't know each other before this. No. But I'm like blown away. I'm like, what can we do together? How can I get this lady to lead me to somehow? You know, <laughs> I can. Sorry, Rocco. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't let that well, happen. Well, and I have to tell you, the re, you know, I when you asked Rocco, did you yeah. think you were going to be in this? There's no way in hell I thought I was going right. to be in this. I was yeah. a punk rock girl with a mohawk in high school. There was no way I thought that I'd be doing what I'm doing now. But. Um, I spent 20 years in politics. I'm still very deeply involved in politics, oh, stop, and so really? when we when we passed three, you know, when we passed medical in Colorado, and then we passed 64, 
I worked with a lot of people on that side with campaigns and candidates to craft their message about what they were going to say during that time. Um, not really realizing that, you know, really in my mind, it was all flower. And then all of these chemists, Colorado being a small community, chemists kind of jumped ship from like plating laboratories and stuff and went into cannabis. And so then we started getting all these cannabis clients coming to us and buying stuff. So it was like, okay, either we're in or we're out or we just pretend like it doesn't exist. And at that point is when we said, okay, we're in. And uh, that's how this whole thing started. So, Well, afterwards, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about your political stuff because I'm an old political hack myself. You both are wonky. political animals wonky. that didn't know each other. I, very so wonky. I'm, just, I'm not interested anymore. <laughs> to me, to me, most politics is administrative. There's very few roles to lead in politics anymore. Well, then we can definitely talk and, about that because <laughs> the only thing I do now is cannabis politics. So that's the only thing I really look at is regulation. And so uh, that this makes is, it a lot more fun. <laughs> no, this is good because we'll, we'll, afterwards we'll talk a little bit about Media USA uh, offline. Media USA, what we're going to do with Media USA and how we're going to focus on the mission of the brands and the interests of the brands because they're the ones that are more interested in getting to patients, consumers as quickly as possible. They're more Absolutely. interested in direct consumer uh, laws, uh, manufacturer to consumer laws, which maybe 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now will happen, yeah. but need to happen. And somebody needs to start pushing things in that direction. After 10 years of watching people control manipulate and control the rules and regulations to protect their little niche in the supply chain. I got tired of it. And yep. I said, these cats, like, you know, I mean, there's band over there or Stizzy or Wild or any of these groups. They want to protect their legacy, their reputation. They want to build an industry that they can move around faster, which ultimately is building an industry on the interests of the consumers and patients. And, and you seem to get it. I can see that mm -hmm. clearly. And, and you would be a natural for a media USA role. She's also on the board at the NCIA. She yes, I am also yeah. on the board of NCIA <laughs> and, 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 and I, the National Cannabis Laboratories yeah. Council. I didn't know this. And yeah, lots but, of. But you see, it's just it, lots of crazy stuff. And, 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 Again, and, and bad we, life balance. That's what I keep getting back to, Dimitri. Yeah. Bad no, life I balance. Know, I, I know. I know. But Learn to say no <laughs> more. We, we love the NCIA. <laughs> it. But you know, we want a very particular, very specific, nuanced thing for yep. brands, brands, brands. We want to work with the brands. Yep. Because those are the ones that really care. Uh, if you accept other groups that try to push the mission of that group in a certain direction, like, I know we need retail control in New Jersey no matter what. Yeah. Mm, that's not what the consumers and patients want. Yeah. But the brands in the California are saying, we want to mail. And guess who else wants that? Amazon wants that. Yeah. So that's what we see Media USA. So I'd love to chat with you offline. Absolutely. But you seem like a fantastic individual. I'm glad we met. And I'm glad people got to get to see this interaction firsthand. It's just fantastic. Rocco, thank you. Oh, you bet. Yeah, and thank always you. a pleasure. Thank, and you got to come do shrooms with us in the mountains. Oh Lord! <laughs> Once you guys said like you had to machete to get to a place to sleep, <laughs> that's when I was like, I'm out. <laughs> no. Rock I like I like to have a bed in a sink. I'm weird like that. So. Yeah, no, it's we went back to beds. <laughs> I quickly, uh, you know, I'm a pretty creative guy. I'm a little lazy sometimes, but I quickly understood how Canterbury Tales was written because I could have written a Canterbury Tale about all the twelve people. That we had on there. I won't talk about Rocco's Canterbury Tale, <laughs> and then who, what role he played. That, no, I definitely but, want to hear about that no, later. But, but, <laughs> but like, there was one guy, you know, who played the role of like was he wasn't in Canterbury Tales, but Moses. I mean, he literally had a staff, and he parted the jungle, <laughs> and and people followed him out to go in search of like more. I don't even know what they're looking for. <laughs> does, any, Mush does mushrooms? I think it was. Yeah, but he had this big gray beard, and he said, "Boom!" and then "Boom." The jungle opened. Maybe it didn't oh, really open boy. like that, but it felt like it opened like that, you know. And I could have written yeah. a book just about that little story and the alpha male on the roof and the gentleman <laughs> having life. It, it was wild. It was wild. Yeah, I don't know if I can hang with you guys on that level. <laughs> no, you can't. All, all, all you need is a little Beatles music and everything's fine. Yeah. See, now now we have even more in common. That's my favorite band. Yeah, that, that helped out with some people. but but That's Ro not your favorite band. No, I have a lot of favorite bands, but Be Beatles, you know, they summed up a lot of things. A lot of yeah. He's a U2 songs. fan. Oh, you too. Just a little. Yeah, just. Are you a U2 fan as well? Mm -hmm. I was actually thinking about me moving Mita to Las Vegas because they're going to be playing in the Sphere in, in the fall. Oh, really? That whole Sphere thing in yeah. Vegas? It's it's based. They're doing a U2 show, Octung Baby. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, I'd love to see that. Yes. My friend, well, it doesn't really matter. My friend's the editor of the Las Vegas Review Journal. So like the big big newspaper, I, yeah. I called as soon as I heard that like two months ago, 
at the Super Bowl. That's when they announced it. Oh. And it was on the thing. It said, U2 is playing the Super Vegas. I quickly said, you got to get me tickets to the opening night show. Oh, no He's kidding. like, those are going to be the hardest tickets in the world to get. We're going to get them. So That'd anyways, awesome. I don't mean to digress, but you guys are fantastic. And it's great to have you here. And George, any final questions for Rocco? Well, for Liz? I have so many questions, but uh, anyway, um, what about if somebody wants to come and join that 16 brands? Oh, uh, is it what open? What are the rules yes. and regulations? So, what are the obligations? So you can see that's a good question. question. That is a great so question. we do keep it pretty tight to 16 to 20 brands. Uh, the way that this organization works is we take applications for new partnerships um, around October, November. We come up with a strategic plan for the next year. So if we're doing show like this year, we're doing two shows, three parties, for speaking engagements. So we come up with a strategic plan for the entire year, and then we just split that cost between um, the 16 or 18 partners. Our biggest kind of crescendo to that is the MJ BizCon party. We have a big party at uh, the Chandelier Bar. We rent out the second floor um, opening uh, on the Tuesday before MJ BizCon. And last year we had about 350 people. Um, it's a very curated list. It's the only networking event. No unsa, unsa party stuff. It's a networking event designed around the concentrate market. Could you do that again? Unsa, unsa. unsa, unsa no. Unsa. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Um, <laughs> but um, it, but it's all about networking and making sure that the concentrate market, because there's a lot of parties that go, I mean, MJ BizCon is just like a beast in itself. So sometimes you find yourself at, you know, insurance or lawyers or all these different parties. But the one that, you know, we wanted to create was one that was around the concentrate market. So the, it's our fourth. This will be our fourth year doing it. Um, so that is the biggest kind of crescendo to that is that curated list of people coming in. So you have to apply to be at the party. And um, so it's a it's become quite the. Uh, Quite the event. It's really, really going to be fun. George, you should get Pure 5 involved with it. Absolutely. Oh, maybe, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we're, we'll that. be looking at that in uh, probably October. So okay. That's yeah. fantastic. And I look forward to working with you more. Absolutely. It's been a great honor to meet you right here. This has been a great interaction. And it's been another great episode of Meet Unshackled. Real quickly, I forgot to mention, how do people get a hold of you guys? Best way. Um, LinkedIn, email, phone number. LinkedIn is, I'm, yes, here's my personal cell phone <laughs> I number. give out my cell phone. <laughs> My cell phone's no, everywhere. No, no. Yeah. LinkedIn would be great. Liz Geiselman or Rocco Ian Apollo, if you're phonetically spelling it out. Uh, but yeah, definitely LinkedIn is probably the best way to get a hold of us. And my email is my best way of communication, Rocco at rmreagents.com. Excellent. Well, people know how to get a hold of you guys, and we thank you guys for being on Meet Unshackled. Appreciate that. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. See you.